A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. early in the month of April, when the strong, warm winds from the southeast lashed the gamma grass of the Great Plains until it resembled the heaving bosom of a turbulent sea, and billowing white clouds driven before the fretful gusts of the maverick wind banked themselves like a cornered herd against the towering mountain ranges of the Continental Divide. In the kitchen of the Arrowhead Ranch, Mom Stevens was clearing away the last of the breakfast dishes when nine-year-old Buddy Stevens rushed in. What is it, buddy? Mom, you've got to come and see the Ling Chow made for me. You've got to, Mom. Don't get so excited, buddy. What's Ling Chow made now? Can't tell you. you got to see for yourself. Come on, Mom. Hurry, won't you? Well, wait till I finish up with these dishes. <laughs> uh, your father hired Ling Chow to cook for the range crew, but he seems to spend most of his time entertaining you. Oh, Ling Chow's a swell fella. But come on, Mom, you've got to see what he made this time. It's wonderful. Oh, all right. Let's go see what it is. You better tie your bonnet on tight. The wind's mighty strong. <laughs> After putting on her bonnet, Mrs. Stevens left the house with Buddy. She felt some slight annoyance over the fact that Ling Chow was again wasting time from his kitchen chores to entertain Buddy. But when she looked down at the boy's excited face and glowing eyes, she smiled and quickened her pace as Buddy urged her to hurry. Come on, Mom. In a few minutes, they approached the field behind the barn where Ling Chow bent over a startling and unusual object on the ground. Mrs. Stevens stared for a moment in amazement. Then she spoke. What, what in the world is it, Buddy? Are you scared, Mom? It's enough to frighten the daylights out of anyone. Hello, Ling Chow. Hello, Miss Stevens. You come see Charlie's dragon, eh? It's a dragon, all right, but what's it for? Why, Mom, it's a kite. A kite? Sure it is. Isn't it a big one? Well, it certainly is. Will it fly, Ling Chow? Oh, yes, Miss Stevens, it flies. I've seen pictures of Chinese dragon kites, but I never realized before that they were so large. When I was boy in China, I have many kites like this one, Miss Stevens. Sure he did, Mom. I asked him to make me one, and there it is. 
Now you can watch it fly. You'll actually kite fly, Miss Stevens? I wouldn't miss it for anything, Ling Chow. The wind's just right, too. Wind very strong. Kite go up quick. Look at the big ball of string, Mom. Oh, but, buddy, that string isn't strong enough to hold a huge thing like that kite. Why, it's nothing more than thread. Oh, no, no, Miss Stevens. String very strong. It's made of silk. It's made in China, Mom. It's strong as a rope. Ready to fly kite now. You hold the string, Ling Chow. I'll let the dragons had to catch the wind. Ling Chow, lady. How's this, Ling Chow? That very good. Very... Oh, the wind's caught it. There she goes. Wind pull very hard. <laughs> let her out. Let her out, Ling Chow. Pull out the wind. The strong April wind caught the dragon kite and carried it rapidly aloft, where it tossed and rolled above the prairie, just like dragon kites had tossed and rolled high above the tiled rooftops of Shanghai and Hong Kong for hundreds of years. Higher and higher it climbed, like a winged serpent of many colors, until at last the ball of silken thread was almost exhausted, and Ling Chow, the Chinese cook, brought his silken monster to a standstill in the gusty sky. No more string! Kite, stop now, buddy. Oh, gee. Let me fly it now, Ling Chow. Oh, buddy, the wind's too strong. You couldn't hold it. Wind very strong, buddy. But you promised. You said I could fly it myself. Now, buddy, Ling Chow knows this. But he made it for me, and he said I could fly it. I make promise when wind not blows or big. But look, the, the wind's calmed down. It's not blowing hard now. Ling Chow, please. Kino, v- very well. Ling Chow make promise to buddy. Ling Chow keep flowers. Oh, golly gee. Now, hold on tight to the string, buddy. Oh, I got it. Here comes oh. big wind. Look out, buddy. Golly, it's strong. Hell. Hell. Grab the string, Ling Chow. I can't hold it. Kite's gone. Oh, buddy, I knew this would happen. It's gone. It's gone. My dragon kite's gone. Meantime, two horsemen coming from Frontier Town rode along the Overland Trail which passed near the Stevens Spread. One of the riders wore a black mask and was mounted on a magnificent silvery white stallion. The other rider, an Indian, rode a beautiful paint horse. They were the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who moved along in silence. Until suddenly Tonto, who glanced upward, pointed toward the sky and spoke with a slight trace of excitement in his voice. Look, Kimasabi. Big snake, fly like bird. Where, Tonto? Over there. It flies this way. Oh, I see it now. Big snake falling fast. That's that strange. <laughs> yes, it is strange. We never see snake fly through air like bird. I've never seen you as curious about anything. Very <laughs> silver, easy one. It looked like plenty long string come down from snake. That's right, Kimosabe. There's a string trailing behind it. I want to catch that string and we'll bring in the snake that flies like a bird. Come on, sir. Here it comes. Easy, Silver. Right there, boy. Ring, I've got it. Easy, whoa now. Ready? Just mount, Tato, and hold the horses, will you? Oh, Scott. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Now to draw it in. As the Lone Ranger brought in the giant dragon kite, it occurred to him that this was the first time he had ever seen Tonto show so much curiosity. Tonto, like other Indians, had always managed to repress his curiosity. The masked man was amused as he brought in the kite until it lay collapsed on the ground. There you are, Tonto. Now you can examine it. Made of fine silk and light sticks of wood. Ah. Me see boy fly kite in El Paso, but kite not like this. No, I guess not. This is a Chinese dragon kite. One of the finest I ever saw. You see kite like this? Yes, many years ago. Before I knew you, Tonto. Where you see big snake kite? In China. China? Well, that's far off. Way across water. That's right. There are many kites like this in China. They call them dragon kites. This kite not fly from China. Where this kite come from? Oh, probably from a nearby ranch. Must have broken away in the wind and drifted here. Wind not blow hard now. That's why the kite was falling when you saw it. I'll anchor it to windward. It won't blow away. Why you do that, Kimasabi? My guess, the owner of this kite will come looking for it. Too fine a specimen to lose. There, it's tied securely. All right, let's mount up, city big boy. Just a moment, Tonto. See that horse to the south of us? 
Ah. Horse got saddle. No rider. We'll rope him and check his brand. He must have strayed from a nearby ranch. Come on, come A short time later, Mrs. Stevens sat on the ranch house porch while Buddy sat dejectedly on the nearby steps. Hearing the sound of approaching hoofbeats, Buddy looked up, then called out to his mother. Look, Mom, isn't that Dad riding in? Well, yes, it is, Buddy. And he's riding fast. He's got something in his hand. Oh, I hope nothing's happened to poor Lynn Charles. Here he comes. Oh, 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 oh. What did you find out, Dad? You didn't find Ling Charles? No, but we found his hat. Here it is. The range crew's still looking for him. I told him to go on looking until dark. What's that? Feathers. We picked these up where we found the hat. Painted feathers? They're Indian feathers. Came out of a war bonnet. Indian? Dad, we've never seen any Indians around here. Just the same, buddy. These are Indian feathers. Then something has happened to Ling Charles. Sure looks that way, Mary. But I can't understand it. It's been years since there's been Indian trouble around here. Well, Wade, look. Two men are riding in. And they're leading a horse. What? Ling Chow's horse. And one of them's mad. Yeah. Just what's this all about? Here they come. Buddy, get with your mother. I'll cover this pair before they get the drop on Come on, buddy. Let's go there. Now keep your hands where I can see them and maybe you won't get hurt. You two have got some explaining to do. The Lone Ranger explained to Wade Stevens how he and Tonto had found the horse and the dragon kite. And in return, learned that after the kite broke away from Buddy Stevens, the Chinese cook had gone in search of it. He had failed to return to the ranch. And a search for him had resulted in Stevens finding the hat and Indian feather. You can put away your guns, Wade. They're not looking for trouble. We're here to help you if we can. All right, maybe you are on the level of that. Get down off your horses. Thanks, baby. Please. Easy, 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 easy. There are no Indians around here. The nearest reservation is a hundred miles west. Yes, that's right. And there's not been Indian trouble in ten years or more. I just don't understand it. Let me examine those feathers, will you? Here you are. Hmm. Otto, uh, take a look at these feathers, will you? Uh, them youth feathers. That's not good, Kimasabi. What's he mean? Their feathers dyed with the favorite colors of the youth tribe. Utes? Now, they're the reservation Indians I just spoke about. Yes, I know. About a week ago, Yellow Dog, the medicine man of the tribe, jumped the reservation with a band of young bucks. Yellow Dog? I've heard he's an ornery critter. The troublemaker. Oh, so, uh... Where'd you find these feathers in the hat, Stephen? About four miles south of Buzzard Canyon. Buzzard Canyon? That band came up on Yes, Tonto. You'll have to act fast. What are you two talking about? When uh, Yellow Dog and his bucks jumped the reservation, they thought they'd gone to hunt and would soon return. I don't I doubted it. We've been trying to find them. Just who are you? That's not important now. But, Stephen, Buzzard Canyon is the ancient ceremonial grounds of the pagan youth. Ah, Ancestors hold devil dance there long time ago. Devil dance? Well, that's where they make sacrifices to the great spirit. And it's been outlawed for years. Right. But Yellow Dog is a pagan. He wants the young bucks of the tribe to be pagans also. There's no doubt they're in Buzzard Canyon. Ling Chow is their prisoner. Why, Dad, blast their red hides. I'll round up my range hands and we'll ride in there and blast them to kingdom come. You wouldn't have a chance. No bunch of reservation Indians can come prowling around here like that. Now, we listen to the masked man. You've got no more than a dozen men. I got 15. And they have more than a hundred. We haven't time to ride to Fort Lyon for help. But what can we do? Fortunately, the youths won't make a sacrifice until sunup. Sacrifice? You mean they'll... They'll try... hold the devil dance during the night. Then at sunup, they'll kill Ling Chow. And offer his heart to the great spirit. Oh, kill him, child. You'll kill him. Oh, it's horrible. And we're helpless to aid him. We've got to try. Stevens. Yeah? You must trust me and do what I tell you. Now, just a minute. I'm willing to trust you. But when it comes to giving orders, I'm the boss around here. Wade, please. Let's hear what the masked man has to say. Then you can decide who will be born. That's reasonable. How about it, Stevens? All right, let's hear it. I'll decide after I've heard what you got to say. The 
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. The Lone Ranger impressed upon Wade Stevens that Ling Chow, the Chinese cook, would be sacrificed at sunup to the pagan gods of the Utes if a single slip were made in efforts to rescue him. Then the masked man pointed to Tonto and said, Our one hope lies in Tonto. Him being the Indian, Wade, he'll be able to help the masked man. Sure he will, Dad. All right, then. You're the boss. I'll do what you say. Good. When your range crew rides in, keep them here until I return. They should be riding in any time now. It's getting dark, and they won't be able to pick up a trail. Where are you and Tato going? I can't explain now, buddy. But I'll be back in a short time. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. I'll have the range crew ready and waiting when you get back. Good. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. After more than an hour of hard riding, the Lone Ranger and Tonto neared Buzzard Canyon, ancient ceremonial place of the once pagan Utes, but they made no attempt to enter. Instead, they tethered their horses in a rugged draw, and a few moments later, under the cloak of darkness, crouched on a ledge overlooking the canyon. The monotonous rhythm of drums came clearly to them, and they knew the devil dance had begun. Peering over the ledge, they saw a circle of hideously painted Indians dancing wildly about a large bonfire. And a few paces away, they saw the form of a very small man tied to the trunk of a tree, the top of which had been cut away a few feet from the ground. That's Ling Chao. Ah, him tied to poor. Study his position, Tonto. Make sure of every detail. Yeah, me do it. We go now. No, not just yet. Why we stay? Then not much time can I know. I'll have a sentry posted near the pass. Mm, we're close to pass now. Quiet, Tonto. There's a sentry. Uh, you come this way. Be ready to silence him. Easy now. Here he comes. Get him, Tonto. Get him. I got him. I got him. Quickly, Tonto. Get his bonnet and clothing. We get him. The great feathered bonnet and buckskin breeches were quickly taken away from the unconscious sentry. As the lone ranger bound and gagged him, Tonto slipped out of his own clothing and into that of the Ute. When he was finished, the lone ranger struck a match, which he cupped in his hands and held over the face of the prostrate Ute. The face was hideous in its gaudy paint and fantastic patterns, but Tonto studied it closely. Do you recognize the mask, Tonto? Uh, that devil mask. Me no devil mask. Can you duplicate it quickly? Uh huh. We go to horses. Me put on paint, Pronto. Good. You'll have to hurry. Returning to the horses, Tonto proceeded to apply the fantastic coloring of the devil mask to his own face, while the Lone Ranger quietly outlined a daring plan. They returned then to the pass leading down to the canyon. For a brief moment, they stood peering down upon the painted youths as they danced wildly around the huge fire to the beat of the tom-toms. Then the Lone Ranger placed his hand on Tonto's shoulder. You can get to Ling Chow. Tell him Wade and Mrs. Stevens and Buddy sent you. You'll understand then and do what you tell him. Ah, uh, me tell him. And Tonto. Uh-uh. I never before asked you to risk your life. But you realize both of us would die if I went with you. Oh, me know that, Kimasabi. It better you not go. Adios.
as the two friends separated, perhaps for the last time, and each went his respective way, the beat of the tom-toms grew in rapidity, and the frenzy of the dancing youths became more fanatical and torturous. Round and round they danced, unmindful of the fire that had ceased to flame skyward and was now but a pile of dull, glowing embers. Unmindful of fellow dancers who fell exhausted from the ranks, their places taken by other frenzied redskins whose faces were distorted by paint and fanaticism beyond human recognition. So hypnotized by their own weird spectacle, the youths also failed to see a shadowy figure emerge from the blackness of the night and approach the figure of their sacrifice bound to the post. You Ling Chow. You go away. Go away. Do not be afraid. Be friend. You lie. You come kill Ling Chow. You go away. Be quiet. Be friend. Rancher Wade Stevens, my friend. Buddy, my friend. Mrs. Stevens' friend. Oh, if you speak truth, may my ancestors forgive me. I spoke from fear. That's all right. Me understand. Now you listen to what Tonto tell you. Maybe we save your life. It's fool who covers ears before bringer of good tidings. Speak, my friend Tonto. <laughs> Having gained Ling Chow's confidence, Tonto, unobserved by the dancing, frenzied youth braves, hurriedly and in low tones told Ling of the plan he and the Lone Ranger had agreed upon. Then leaving Ling's side, Tonto slipped into the circle of dancing youths and became one of the shouting, fanatical band. Meantime, on the rim of the canyon above, the Lone Ranger made a last-minute check to see that Wade Stevens and his men had followed his instructions. Are all of your men placed about the canyon, Stevens? Yeah, I did, just like you told me. Got the pass guarded at both ends, and I picked up some range hands from the wagon wheel spread. They're on the bluff. And they're armed to the teeth, too. Good. Look to the east. Oh, it's starting to get light. Day will break in a few moments. When the first rays show in the canyon, they'll make the sacrifice. I hope they didn't discover Tonto. I tried to pick him out, but I can't. He's dressed and painted like the rest of them. We'll know in a few minutes. If they sacrifice Ling Chow, it'll mean Tonto never got to him. Yes, we'll know then. At least we're ready if he did reach him. The wind's starting to rise, too. That's in our favor. You bet it is, Mom. Buddy. Yes, sir? You and your mother'd better not remain here on the bluff. But rather you weren't here to see what happens if our plan miscarries. It'd be horrible, Buddy. Come on, let's go. Can't we go with Dad? He'll need both of us. I guess I will at that. I don't know much about this... (laughs) What's that yelling about? What's happening? They've seen the first rays of the rising sun. It's time for the sacrifice. Oh. Quick, buddy. Mary, we've got to hurry. Oh, quick, Stevens, buddy, be sure to check oh. the direction of the wind. I will. Adios. Adios. Here come medicine man. You do what we tell you. Good advice, like riches. It's worth much to the needy. Men and meal. Two are going law. You tell yellow dog, great medicine man. What you tell me? Your medicine, no good. Is very bad medicine. That lie. I make medicine for great spirit. Oh, 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 you are a big fake. I, I make big medicine. Heap big medicine. Little man, say you big fool. Yellow dog, no fool. Yellow dog, great medicine man. Me kill, give heart to great spirit. What him say now? Him speak to great spirit. Ask great spirit, send devil, kill you. Him big fool. You look in sky. You a big fool. What that big snake? It fly like bird. Can yellow dog make medicine like that? Me make medicine. Give yellow dog gun. Uh, here, gun. Me kill snake that fly. Oh, you cannot kill my medicine. Me shoot from sky. Stop! Don't go in there. Stop! 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 Stop!
the renegade youths who had followed Yellow Dog off their reservation to the ceremonial grounds of their ancestors faced a disheartening disillusionment. Before their very eyes, they'd seen the man they planned to sacrifice defy their own medicine man. They'd seen him make bigger medicine than Yellow Dog. Their medicine man had not only failed to shoot the demon from the sky, but it had shot back at him. The gods were angry with Yellow Dog. Quickly, he tried to rally them to go on with the sacrifice. As he pleaded, cajoled, and threatened, the painted youths hesitated between loyalty and fear. Tonto and Ling Chao stood silent, wondering what the decision would be. And then the strong wind became gusty, and the dragon kite plunged and swayed into the canyon, its vivid colors flashing in the early morning sunlight. It was too much for the superstitious pagans. They broke and ran. Yellow Dog, the medicine man, knew that he could never again return to his tribe, that he would be an outcast forever. But he still had one ace left in his hard luck hand. It was Tonto's gun. Suddenly he faced Tonto. No! Raider! Big fool got gone. Uh. You not you. You friend of bad medicine. Now I kill you, you traitor. Then I kill bad medicine. Drop that gun, yellow. Dog. No, he got gun now, Kimosabi. Oh. Good fellow. <laughs> You let Yellow Dog go. You go all right. Back to the reservation to stand trial. Bring him along, Tonto. Uh, well, Cut your rope, Sling Chow. It was not until after they had reached the ranch and Ling Chow was eating a sumptuous breakfast, which he didn't cook, that he learned from the Stevens family how he had been delivered from certain death at the hands of the superstitious youths. You see, Ling Chow, it was the masked man in town who found the dragon kite. And the masked man figured it would scare the daylights out of them pagan youths. <laughs> and I guess it did. It was Dad and I who flew it over the canyon. And Mom helped, too. And you recollect the shot that was fired at old Yellow Dog right after he shot at the kite? And Yellow Dog thought it was the dragon shooting at him? Oh, Ling Chow never forget it. It, uh, mystified Ling Chow for a moment. Well, that was the masked man, too. He fired it. Were you very frightened, Ling Chow? Ling Chow had much fear at first. But when Tonto tell Ling Chow about Mask Flynn... Ling Chow not fled anymore. Tonto told you who he is? You mean you know who he is? Why, even we don't know him. Mask man, very fine friend. Tonto say Mask Flynn is Lone Ranger. This is a copyrighted feature originated by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Thank you.